there was a time that if you needed motion detection for lighting and you couldn't run power to the device, you were limited to something like this. It had a motion detector on one end, some LED bulbs on the other, and on the back, you put in some AA or AAA batteries. Wasn't the best solution. Now we have solar. Thanks to the Home Depot Seeds program, we're gonna unbox the Gamasonic Solar Lighting. What makes this interesting is that it outputs 500 lumen of light when it's on, or there's a high intensity of 1440. And you're looking at about four to eight hours, depending on how it's set. It has a detection zone mode. You can mount it on a pole or on a wall, and it's considered a do-it-yourself project with no wiring. Looking at the specs on the back, we see that it takes six hours to fully charge using the 10 watt panels. It'll give you 150 cycles, that's on and off cycles, so if you have lots of trees moving at night and it's detecting it, it won't drive you crazy because it'll cycle out after 150. The unit is 20 inches long, eight and a half inches wide. Solar panel is about 15 and a half inches times seven, and it has 56 LED lamps. The reason this unit can put out so much light is that it uses a 11.1 volt, four amp hour lithium battery, giving you the ability to output 12 watts of LED light. Let's unveil our waterproof product. Nice protection for shipping. Here's the big solar panel. There's no uh, plastic peel off of here. If we turn the unit over, there are the LEDs. There's the motion detector. There is some peel, and for those of you who like that, voila. This is a mode indicator which lets you know whether it's charging, if it's in night mode, if it's at 100%, 50%, 25%. I don't know if I'll be able to see this where I'm gonna put it, but it's nice to know that it's there. And right next to the motion detector is the timer. So if you set it for dawn to dusk type lighting, you can specify whether it's gonna be from zero to eight hours. I'm just going to use the motion detector to trigger the unit. And at the back end of the unit is a switch that lets you set perimeter off or on. Included with the kit, instruction manual, some hardware that allows you to attach it to a structure or put it on a post. I was surprised to discover that when you put it in the on position, it actually powers up and it shows that there is 50% battery life left. Now while the on mode is 500 lumen, you can get up to 1440 by switching it over to perimeter. And let's show you what that looks like. See how much brighter that is compared to the on position. If you decide to mount on a pole, you use this mounting bracket and the four bolts, washers, and nuts that are included. Or if you decide not to, but you want to mount it on a wall, they give you one and a half inch wood screws and anchors to go with that should you need them. I opted out of this and decided to go with, I decided to go with three inch screws because I needed the extra length. As you can see, the extra length on the screws is what helped me get into this old telephone pole that we decided to repurpose to light up an area in our driveway. When mounted to a pole, this is what your light fixture will look like. Solar on top, catching sunlight, and then your LEDs on the bottom. It's at an angle, so your optimal sun lighting should be coming from that direction, which kind of defeats the purpose if you have a long pole like this, or worst case scenario, if this is a wall. 
this panel seems like it would work best if the pole ended there and didn't go up any higher and if the sunlight was coming from that direction that would be optimal anything else would be less than optimal and unfortunately you can't tilt this panel or swivel it to aim it towards the optimal area in our case in the united states that is south our sun arc is in this direction which means that the panel should be tilting that way towards the sun arc. Following that same idea, here's a wall that's facing east. And while it catches the morning sun, if the unit is tilted back, the solar panel doesn't catch optimal lighting. Plus we have the challenge of the overhang casting shadow and not allowing for that arc of the sun to give us full lighting when it's in this area. Anyone with an overhanging roof like this would have quite a challenge getting useful energy out of that solar panel mounting it let's say on this wall. This is a south facing wall which would catch most of the sunlight except of course for the overhang which casts the big shadow. I'm having a bit of a challenge with this review because I really like this product I mean, if you think about it, it's a solar cell powered light that puts out a maximum of 1440 lumens. That's pretty amazing. Then, you know, they use monocrystalline solar cells, which are the more premium ones, they're higher efficiency. So that's really great for this product. The light charges in like six hours if it has direct sunlight. Using the timer, have it run out to about eight hours of light output. Of course, it'll be at a lower level. The batteries are replaceable. So there's a 4 amp hour 11.1 volt battery that has a lifespan of about three years. You can mount this on a pole or surface mounted. And of course, all you need to make it work is the sun. That's the caveat with this is that you need direct sunlight to really charge this unit properly. The unit as it's designed mounts at an angle. So the solar panel is actually tilted back towards the base, which is fine as long as the sunlight's coming from that direction. This means, of course, that the light output is in the opposite direction, which means the sun kind of dictates where the light's going to shine down from this fixture. Depending where you want your light to shine, you may be better off trying to get a wired unit in that location. Otherwise, you might be disappointed in the performance of this since it may not get enough light to operate for like up to eight hours at night. Unfortunately, you can't remove the solar panel or tilt it or swivel it to get optimal sunlight on it. So you're stuck either aiming the solar panel at optimal sunlight and then living with the results of where the light output falls or trying to compromise between the two. Expected battery life for this unit is about three years. It's going to cost you, at least currently today, about $70 to replace that. And you have to take the whole unit apart to do it, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. I think this unit would work if you have the ideal location for it. And if you mount it on a pole, or if you mount it on a wall, that at least the solar panel clears so it's catching the most sunlight as possible. I hope that in the near future they improve this product by allowing you either to remove the panels so you can aim it towards the optimal sunlight or allowing it to at least swivel and tilt. I would recommend before going out and buying this product that you survey the area that you want to light, see where the sunlight's coming through, if it's being blocked by things, and then determine whether this product will best serve your need. It is dark out. Time to see if this light works. Well, we see that that one works. And indeed, this one also works. And now you get an idea of, it's about eight, 10 feet above the ground. How much of an area it throws light down on. 
So pretty impressive for solar lighting. So it seems like you have to get right underneath this light for it to trigger. So we're probably about 15 feet away and it finally triggered and probably about yeah it's probably about 15 or so feet away so it's not as sensitive as that motion detector there but it's powered by the Sun if you found this video interesting or useful give us a thumbs up Leave us a comment, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching. And don't forget to join the subscription team.